Hi, everybody. Today we're going to be discussing SOAP COTOA, which stands for our sine, cosine, and trig functions. In order to proceed in discussing the sine, cosine, and trig functions, you need to be able to label all sides of a right triangle. In this specific triangle, the bottom left-hand corner where you see the box is your 90-degree angle. In the bottom right-hand corner is our theta, or the angle we will be discussing or focusing on. Now across from theta is known as your opposite side. Across from your 90 degree angle is known as your hypotenuse. And next to your theta is known as your adjacent side. So now let's talk about SOKOTOA. The first part of SOKOTOA is SO. This stands for sine of theta is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. In regards to ka, this represents cosine of theta is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Lastly, TOA represents tan of theta is equal to opposite divided by adjacent. So SOCOTOA is just an acronym that is used to help you remember your trig functions. Let's look at example one. A new spruce tree was planted 45 feet away from your house. You measure the angle of elevation from the ground to the top of the tree to be 59 degrees. Determine the height h of the tree to the nearest foot. Now, in order to make this example come to life, I have included pictures. So let's begin with the spruce tree. Here is your spruce tree and here is your house. Now, if we create the right triangle, we can implement the information from the example into our picture. So we know the house is 45 feet away from the tree. And then we have to notice the keyword elevation. Elevation is from the ground to the top. So the angle in the bottom right hand corner will be labeled 59 degrees. Next, we're determining the height of the tree. So therefore, your left hand side of your triangle or where your tree is, is going to be the height. Now, looking at the angle across from the angle, is your tree, so that is known as your opposite side, and next to your angle is your adjacent side. So here, we are going to think about SOKOTOA, and the only trig function that uses opposite and adjacent is your tangent trig function. Now we're gonna take our information and substitute it into our equation. So theta will be replaced with 59, our opposite side we know is h, and our adjacent side is 45. Now we're going to cross multiply to get 45 times tan 59, which is equal to 74.89. However, since the question told us to determine the height to the nearest foot, we must round up. Therefore, the height of the tree is about 75 feet. Again, when you are performing your calculations in your calculator, please be sure that your mode is in degrees. Let's look at example two. A lighthouse keeper in the top of a 75 foot lighthouse sees a boat at an angle of depression of 40 degrees. How far is the boat from the base of the lighthouse to the nearest tenth of a foot? So here we have the lighthouse and here we have the boat. We are going to draw our right triangle over that and then implement our information. So you know the lighthouse is 75 feet and then we have to talk about the angle of depression. Angle of depression is where it depreciates. So therefore, we are going to extend the line from the top of our triangle, and your angle of depression is looking down. So therefore, that is 40 degrees. Now, based on the alternate interior angle theorem, we know that the bottom right-hand corner of our right triangle is also 40 degrees. Remember, look for the Z shape when you are talking about alternate interior angles. Now we are deciding how far away the boat is from the lighthouse. So therefore, we can represent that with x. Looking at our angle, we know that 75 feet is your opposite, and x is your adjacent side. So therefore, we will be using tangent again. Here, this is going to be tan of 40 is equal to 75, which is our opposite side, divided by x, which, are, which is our adjacent. Once you cross multiply, you will get x times tan of 40 is equal to 75. Then divide both sides by tan of 40, 
in order to get x is equal to 89.38. So therefore, since we have to round to the nearest tenth, the boat is about 89.4 feet away from the lighthouse. Now let's look at example three. Jason is planting a new garden and would like to put a fence around the perimeter. He has a 14 foot pathway that goes diagonally across the garden at an angle of 30 degrees from the entrance. Determine how much fencing Jason will need to cover the perimeter of his garden to the nearest tenth of a foot. So here we have the garden and I have labeled the entrance for you. Now we know that the pathway is 14 feet long and the angle from the pathway to the entrance of the garden is going to be 30 degrees. Now, in order to determine how much fencing for the perimeter, we need to cover all four sides. So opposite sides we can label as X for the width, and then length we can represent with Y. Now, across from your 30 degree angle is known as your opposite side. Next to your 30 degree angle is adjacent, and opposite of your 90 degree angle is going to be your hypotenuse. So here, in order to determine either x or y, or in this case, the width or the length of the garden, we will need to use our sine and cosine trig functions. So let's begin with solving for x. Here we're going to take sine of our angle, which is 30 degrees, and this is going to equal opposite, which is x, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 14. We will then cross multiply in order to get x is equal to 7. Now let's solve for y. Here we have cosine of 30 is equal to y divided by 14. And then after we cross multiply, we will get y is equal to roughly 12.1. Now, in order to find the perimeter, you must add all four sides. So we're going to substitute 7 plus 7 plus 12.1 plus 12.1 is roughly 38.2 feet to the nearest tenth of a foot. So therefore, Jason will need about 38.2 feet of fencing in order to cover the perimeter of the garden. Now let's look at our last example, which is example four. A park is looking to build a new skate ramp for the public. Each ramp is going to be about 25 feet long and 10 feet high. What does the angle of elevation need to be to the nearest thousandth of a degree to ensure the safety of the skateboarders? So here is our ramp. We know that the ramp has to be 25 feet long and 10 feet high. So here we're looking at the angle of elevation. Now across from your X or across from your angle that you were looking for, this is known as your opposite side. And again, across from your 90 degree angle, that is your hypotenuse. So here we're going to be using sine because we are dealing with opposite and hypotenuse. So here we're gonna have sine of X because we do not know the degree and that's going to equal 10 divided by 25. In order to determine the angle, we must use the inverse trig option, which is represented by sine to the negative first. If you type in your calculator, second sine, and then 10 divided by 25, you will get your solution, which is roughly 23.578 degrees. In order to check your work, you can take the degrees that you found and substitute back in for X. So sine of 23.578 is roughly 0 0.4, and 10 divided by 25 is also 0 0.4, so therefore you know you did it correctly. Thank you for watching and I hope this clarifies basic trig functions of sine, cosine, and tangent. Please watch other videos for further support.